You are now watching Read Media. Many masterpieces of art history have long lived outside the public view either buried in the depths of basements of museums or tucked away in villas of the rich. However, unknown to most, the largest art collection in the world is currently collecting dust in a Geneva Freeport, a fenced off warehouse near Geneva Airport, beyond the view of the public and outside the reach of law enforcement agencies and tax authorities. Most people are unaware of how vital of a role Freeports play in the global network of high-end art transactions. We do not even have a ballpark estimate of the value of goods stored in luxury Freeports due to the laws protecting their secrecy. In 2016, Deloitte estimated that $1.6 trillion of high net worth individual wealth was allocated to art, and by 2026, they project that number to almost double. Contrary to what most people think, the high-end art world is not filled with patient art aficionados willing to drop tens of millions of dollars in the name of art. It's a world filled with mostly savvy investors, business people, and the money at elite. If you're fascinated with the different types of tax loopholes individuals and companies are able to get away with, look no further. The high-end art market is an ideal playing ground for tax dodging, offshore banking, and even money laundering. If you want to stay engaged with this channel, please take a moment to like and subscribe. Thanks so much. Luxury art is useful for all matter of financial maneuvering, but one of the biggest reasons the wealthy elite of the world love it so much is because it's a very cost-dense physical asset. Think about all the things you can buy for $100 million. You can get a private jet, a yacht, or maybe even some pricey real estate. But these objects are huge. They have a massive physical presence. So if you want to stash your wealth discreetly, a 200-foot mega yacht is not the most low-key approach and running costs and depreciation make it a pretty bad investment anyways. Artwork is small, easy to store, holds its value, and can be worth an insane amount of money. In 19th century Switzerland, an innovation emerged that would eventually serve the art industry very effectively. And today, as a result, there are free ports, extremely secure storage facilities offshore where valuable commodities can be kept with the utmost discretion and no one can enter without an appointment. As the economies around the world became substantially more connected when the internet emerged in the late 20th century, tax loopholes and secrecy domains acquired a much greater significance in the global economy. And for art, the Freeport became the physical equivalent of a Swiss bank account. These international free trade zones and tax-free storage facilities around the globe, which the world's biggest exist in Switzerland, Luxembourg, and Singapore, are usually exempt from tariffs, value-added tax, capital gains tax, or other charges that could be levied on the owner of the art. And if that art is held through an anonymously owned offshore company, then it is also very likely that the artwork will be outside of the scope of wealth taxes and other rules on inheritance, because its ownership is simply not declared. Let's look at a comparison. When you sell your home, the paperwork details of the sale of that asset are all available to the public, including your name and the previous owners. But when someone sells an artwork at a free port or even an auction, no matter how big the purchase is, the identity is typically concealed. So the paperwork might identify the work coming from a European collection, but the buyer usually has no clue with whom he or she is dealing with. Sometimes, surprisingly, even the auction house may not know who the seller is. So in brief, you have a market connected by a large network of luxury free ports with a liquidity pool in the multi-trillions of dollars, protected by secrecy and designated by governments around the world as a tax shelter. And to top it off, external and international watchdogs do not regulate the art market as they do with financial markets. Works of art are really tough to value financially. They do not have a fixed value as currency does, and its value can be purely subjective. As a result, the price of art can be inflated legitimately or through other means such as conspiracy among bidders at an auction. So here Here's where the art of tax scheming in the art world becomes very interesting. Collectors can receive tax benefits by donating pieces from their collection to museums, acting as a tax credit system, offsetting the tax payable by the taxpayer. This is where buying low and donating high is really beneficial. Since the charitable deduction would take the current value of the work into account, not the amount the collector originally paid for it. So, if you have a big tax bill coming up, and most billionaires do, you could, in theory, buy a large collection of art from a no-name artist at a really low price. Drum up some interest in this artist by locating and paying a reputable art dealer to campaign for this new artist. They will in turn pitch this artist to exquisite magazines how this new artist is changing the landscape of modern art. Once this artist has received some notoriety by the press, bring a few pieces of art from your new collection to an auction house for sale. Now here's where the fun begins. Once the art is up for sale at the auction, you will call in a few fake bids to artificially inflate the price of the art because, well, that's legal in this world. Now you've effectively sold the art back to yourself. And you might be wondering, what has this done for me outside of losing a 2% commission to the auction house? And well, you shouldn't be feeling buyer's remorse because now your artworks on paper are worth a substantial amount of money, raising the net value of your art collection significantly. 
and the value on this paper is legitimized by historical sales figures at the auction where you bid up the price yourself. In reality, the new value of this artwork would be a tough sell to other collectors, so you aren't really getting any richer. But what you can do is donate a few pieces of your art collection to a museum as a charitable donation. This means you will be able to report a large donation to the IRS by just giving away paintings that originally were worth close to nothing. And with any luck, the museum might name a wing after you. In the end, outside of Uncle Sam, this is a win-win all around. A win for you because you save an incredible amount in taxes. A win for the artist because they have new notoriety in the art world. A win for the art dealer because they get to charge you for their services, a win for the auction house who get to charge you a percentage commission of the sale, and a win for the museum because they receive free art. Looking from the outside in, all of the key actors are incentivized to play along in this positive feedback loop because, well, they're better off doing so. And there's nothing inherently illegal with what they're doing. Art is weird. It's difficult to understand the hidden meaning behind it, but it's more difficult to understand their markets and crazy high prices. So why on earth would billionaires stash a significant portion of their net worth in art? Artwork is rare, people expect it to keep appreciating value, it's discreet, and you can pull off financially funny business with it. Artwork is just another tool billionaires use for the accumulation of wealth and distribution of capital worldwide, an effort to ensure their money is working for them and not for some government somewhere.